Oh, look out. On the back stretch. This looks like a bad one. A whole pack of cars went into that cloud of dust, and no one is coming out into the third turn. When the dust and smoke cleared, this was the first clean shot our cameraman could get. The back stretch looks like a junkyard. It all started when Ramo Scott blew an engine coming into turn two. Wendell Scott spun out behind him, and both cars screamed onto the infield dirt. Suddenly, there was a solid blanket of smoke and dust. Like our backstretch camera, the drivers could see nothing. They spun in the oil slick, crashed into the wall, and hurtled into each other. At 195 miles per hour, and with no visibility whatsoever, it was a nightmare, and the worst accident in NASCAR history. Richard Petty's crew discovered a damaged crankcase and pushed the Dodge into the garage. Here's a look at some of the other machinery, completely totaled out. 85 is Ronnie Daniels' Chevy. 48 is the Mercury driven by James Hilton. Bill Ward's Chevy, number 82. 88 is Ron Keselowski. The damage is unbelievable, like Bobby Mossgrover's Ford, number 53. The front end of Bobby Allison's Monte Carlo disintegrated. Buddy Baker's Dodge dragged behind the wall. And here's Cale Yarbrough's Chevy 11. Front end, gone. Car after car is towed behind the wall, with an average cost of $20,000 per racer. This accident is not only the worst, but perhaps the most expensive in the history of NASCAR. Several drivers received lacerations. Earl Brooks had a fractured hand. Joe Frazan suffered shoulder injuries. Slick Gardner, a knee injury. However, due to the rigid NASCAR safety regulations, particularly those concerning roll cages, every driver got out and walked away under his own power. And this in itself is some kind of miracle. 